So, who is going to win the Copa America final and also who is going to win the Euros final comments on this Sunday? Yeah, yeah this coming Sunday is going to be the final for both games. The Copa America, which will be surprisingly after the, the Euros because usually like in 2021, it was the Copa America final on Saturday in 2021, which was July 10th. And on July 11th was the final in the Euros in 2021. So it's kind of surprising that the least favored or the least watched out of the two tournaments is actually lost. That's like putting, that's like in WWE terms, you're putting the main event first and then you're, do, you're putting the ordinary matches later. You know what I mean? So it's that type of thing. I mean, like, what's up with that, man? What's up with that? So anyway, um, yeah, the final is going to be on Sunday. Now, here's my thing. In this video, I'm going to talk about who I believe will win and comparing both tournaments. And this is going to bring me into um, talking about the Argentina coach because he was asked this question. But before I get into all of that, I want to address the Jamaica. Um, so the Jamaican coach that used to coach Jamaica is now, you know, sleeping in bed terms. Terms, not you know, what do you, what you call it you now? Not literally, but figuratively. He's now the new coach for the Ireland men's national team. Now, some Jamaicans see this as um, a robot, like it's a, a sign of betrayal, like it's a disrespect. I don't see it as a disrespect, bro. Particularly when they said that he was looking to, he was looking for a new side to coach, an international side to coach while he was Jamaican school. I don't find that disrespectful, bro. I mean, that's what persons do on a job, bro. Like, if if there's a if there's a job that is not favorable to you, then you know <laughs> you're going to be looking for a new job in the while you're still at the current job that you're at. And let's be honest, in some relationships, that's the case, bro. It's that 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 you know what it's called? It's called being proactive. <laughs> it's showing initiative isn't me you're preparing for the worst you're looking for a better opportunity is me that's what persons do when they're looking for new jobs man our new partners particularly females so this is not new it's just in a different context so i don't see that as disrespectful though that he's he was actually actively looking for a different side to coach while he was jamaican's international coach but I believe they 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 they, they, they disrespect they, they they deem as disrespect was when, you know I don't know exactly but it's like they were trying to say him go ditch them, in the middle of their World Cup qualifying you know proceedings because right now, with the Copa with the Copa America out of the way, after the final, the international games is going to be all about World Cup qualifiers. So he's there saying, man, oh, he can't, oh, can he ditch us at this moment? That, that's that's a betrayal. You know, he's been the Arnold. What? Dude, some of you guys didn't even want him to stay here anyway. So what are you complaining about? You didn't want him to be man, Jam uh, Jamaica coach. And for me, that's a good riddance, though. That's a good riddance because based on how, dude, you have seen the tendency of how he has managed the Jamaican side. In a tournament like the Copa America, you did not manage this side well, in my opinion. When you have in a center forward, a center defensive midfielder in build up play, you know, say you're doing something wrong. You know, say when you're using your striker as the only outlet in your side to a counter attack, and the, the striker is not, uh, he's, not fa he's not very fast, something is wrong. Something is wrong. So I don't see why persons is like is like they want him to, to come back to Jamaica. No nah, man. Let him he, he quit. So let him quit. Let him go wherever he's going. And he's gone to Ireland to be the men's coach. So let him do him. And let us proceed let us move on and get a different coach. Whoever that will be. So yeah, I just wanted to put that in there. So now let us go to the meat of the matter at hand with the Copa America and the Euros. Now uh England has beaten Netherlands in the semi-finals, which was not what I expected because I expected Netherlands to beat England. It was, yes, it was due to a petty reason because, like I said, I used to support Netherlands 
and Netherlands went against uh, Spain in the World Cup 10, 2010 final and I'm gonna lose it. But I didn't, in the 2014 World Cup, they beat Spain in the first game. But that wasn't enough because Netherlands didn't win the tournament. <laughs> they got knocked out by Argentina in the semifinals. So I wanted Netherlands to get some, I guess you could say, revenge or what you call it now. I'm missing the word. It starts with R. Um, I'm missing the word. I can't remember. Retribution. Yes, I wanted Netherlands to get some retribution. That wasn't the case. And when I watched the game, to be honest, bro, let me, let me say this about England. Let me say this about England. England, if you're looking at the quality, if you're looking at the, the, the individual players in England side, just judging based on quality, England, hands down, might, that includes the side that got knocked out, France, Germany, is me, um, which other side? Yeah, that's pretty much it. England has better players on paper than German for for the most part than Germany than German side and France side. And person would have considered these two sides better than England. But if you look at the quality in depth in the England squad, it supersedes Germany side, France side, and I would even say Spain. I would even say Spain. Yeah. Dude, you're looking at an England side that had the, the Bundesliga top scorer. That's Harry Kane. You're looking at a side that has uh, La Liga's best player this the season, Jude Bellingham. You're looking at a side that has Arsenal's best player, Boy Bukayo Saka. You're looking at a side that has Man City's, the Premier League's best player, Phil Foden. That's four players, you know, and four of them are attackers. And I'm not even done yet. Cole Palmer on the bench. This virgin was Chelsea's top scorer last season. In a clandestine side that was unbalanced last season. You see me? This young youth, Cole Palmer. And he scored a good amount of goals. And that's five players. Don't even get me started on Ivan Tony and Watkins. That's seven. And you have Kobe Mino that is coming into his own at a young age. So I don't want to be hearing, you know, person talking about say, this, this, this side is not, I've said that England suck, but it's not due to the quality of player, due to the quality levels of the players or that they're off. It's the fact that the side has, it's not managed by a competent coach. And the competent, and the incompetent coach that is Gareth Southgate doesn't have an implemented system to suit the players as a whole. Because again, man, all of these players are very good, man. All of these players are very good. So it's not that they do have the players to play themselves out of a loss. They do. But it's the fact that they do have a system to accommodate all of them. You understand? So yes, England have a lot of players. This is the best. I would even say this is the, probably the, one of the best moments for England to, to lay hands on a trophy. Like they had uh, like three years ago against Italy. Because they should have won against Italy, but they didn't. And he did score first and he lost the final against Italy. So this is an opportunistic time for England to win a trophy against Spain. Here's the thing. I give a lot of criticism to Gareth Southgate. Zin, I give a lot of criticism to Gareth Southgate. But the substitution that Gareth Southgate made, yes, was it yesterday? Or Wednesday. Oh, yes, it was Wednesday. The substitution he made against uh, is what I'm gonna Netherlands was probably one of the best substitutions he's ever made in a crucial game. Like, and he's made a couple of good substitutions, like when he put on Ivan Tony. Who was it against? Um, I can remember, and Ivan Tony assisted Harry Kane in this in extra time. That was a good substitution. But this time, Ivan Tony was on the bench. He didn't put on Ivan Tony. Instead, he put on Oli Watkins, who was Aston Villa's top scorer last season. Talk about the quality of death, man. This virgin has, like, quality players all around him. You see me? He can just push out his hand like this with his eyes closed and he touches a quality player. That's how much quality player he has at his disposal. But the problem that has been killing England for years 
is that they do have an implemented system to accommodate and suit the players. They do have a system that is compatible to the players that they have. And that this stretches way back to the 90s. I would even say before the 90s. Because England has always had quality players, whether you like it or not. Always. This is me. So, right now is an opportunistic time for England to lay hands on a trophy. So, that is where I'm going to give Gareth Southgate a big thumbs up. I know this is not as big as the thumb. The thumb. My, my fuck. Like and subscribe to the channel if you have watched up until this point. Now is an opportunistic time to like and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below in the comment section. Yeah, man. I give props to Gareth Southgate. Because that was a very good substitution. He put on Oli Watkins and he put on Cole Palmer. And interestingly enough, those are the two players that were involved in the winning goal. Cole Palmer assisted Oli Watkins to score the winning goal. And that was a very good goal that Oli Watkins could score. Um, so yeah, man, this is a good time for England to win the final. Now, if you're going to ask me who I want to win the, the Euro final... Due to my hatred for Spain, I'm going to say England is going to beat Spain. But I, as as if you guys have been keeping up with my videos, <laughs> I've been very unlucky with predictions. Like, for example, I said that Uruguay was going to beat Colombia. Colombia go beat Uruguay. I said that France was going to beat Spain. Spain go beat France. I said that Netherlands was going to beat England. England go beat Netherlands. So I've been, I've, I've, I've been unlucky in terms of predictions. So I guess in this moment to play some reverse psychology i should say you know what england you know spain is going to win the final yeah man spain is going to win not even just win they're going to win convincingly and go score first in the first minute that's how convincing spain's going to win the final but with ulterior motive is that i want england to win though <laughs> but if i say england go win it then probably england go lose it um so yeah man this is dude this, like i said man this is a stock squad England have a very good squad. They have better quality players than France. Yes. In terms of quality players. And I'm a France supporter. You see me? So in terms of on paper, in terms of ranking, we're second place. And that's because we're second place in the World Cup. But if you look at the quality of players of England, man, they can win World Cup on the Euros, man. So yes, I want England to beat Spain. Is me all I want in Netherlands to go beat England, but England go beat Netherlands. So now that England is in the final, I want England to go finish the job and beat Spain. Um so yeah, that let me know your comments on me in the comment section. We want to win the final because again this is a dude, both sides um I mean persons didn't even expect Spain to go this far. To be honest, person didn't expect Spain to go this far if they're being honest with themselves. I did not expect Spain to go even as far as the semi-final. And they did. They go to the semi-final and they go beat France to go to the final. Um. Oh, actually, before, let me, let me, before, before I go any further, there will be a third place match. So that means that Netherlands will be playing against France come on Saturday in the third place. Room. I do, man, I'm, I'm not going to watch that game. Is me and obviously for, for other reasons, but third place, I'm going with France, of course. And it's funny because I used to support Netherlands, I know I support France, so it's like my former lover versus my current lover. Um, say, so yeah, man, let me know your comments down below in the comment section. Man, if you've been watching up until this point, leave your comments in the comment section on who you want to win the Euro final, and we believe we'll be winning the third place as if that is something to win, is me, but. You know, we'll see how that goes. Um, uh, Copa America. Copa America. Um, wait, no, no, no. Let, let me calm down, Ron. Calm down, bro. Calm down. Let us evaluate the game, man. You know, talk about the goal at Simon's go score. Come on. Yeah, man. Calm down, man. We're rushing to. Come on. We have like 15 minutes left. So in the game against Senna, I don't even know why I'm, why I'm rushing, but... You would have thought, you did, you would not have expected England to go down, 1-0 down in the first half. You would not, because honestly, Netherlands wasn't, 
I mean, we're trying to think, but you will not, in terms of attacking prowess, you will not, you will not have expected Netherlands to get the first goal. Although England was trying to, you know, maintain ball possession and control the game, but in terms of attacking, you never expected, you know, Javi Simon to get that goal or anybody from Netherlands to get the goal first. But it was a very good goal by Simon. It was a very colossal shot that was taken. He was even falling on his feet, man. And he took the shot and he got score in the far corner. Pickford didn't have a chance with that. It was a very good goal scored by, by Javi Simons. Very good goal. But here's the thing now. Because of um, Netherlands' failure to, to, to maintain their lead, I think their lead uh, lasted, what, seven minutes or something? Hurricane followed up with a shot and uh, Denzel Dumfries kick his foot. Now, this is a controversial option. Not option, man, what am I thinking about? This is a controversial um, moment because persons think that it's not a penalty. But the contact was made in the box. And the contact was made on the follow-through by Hurricane. So if you ask me if it was a penalty, I'm going to say it's a tough one, but I'm going to say by the law of the book, it's a penalty. As much as I don't want to say it's a, it's a penalty, I have to be honest and say it's a penalty because that type of contact and the height of his foot should not have been there. Now, some person go, go try to theorize it and say, well, you know, in hindsight, he did not expect Hurricane's foot to, to to make contact with his foot, bro. It's still, even if he didn't have it in his thought that, you know, because I'm pretty sure he was trying to block the shot with his foot. I didn't expect Hurricane's foot to come in contact with his foot. But that's what happened. And because it happened by the law of the book of football, 101, it's a penalty. Contact is made and it's in the box. Penalty. As soon as the referee went you know, went to, to see on VAR, you know, say it's a penalty. You know, say it's a penalty. It's not even a question. <laughs> Once any referee is going to view an, a situation, whether it's a penalty, you just know it's a penalty. So don't even waste the time. And Hurricane converted his penalty, so it's 1-1. Now, Phil Foden had a chance to put England on top a few minutes later, but it was cleared off of the line by the same person in the Dumfries. Isn't me? Um, and Dumfries wasn't even booked for that. Oh, he was he booked for that uh, challenge on Hurricane? I don't even. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm having a senior moment. I can't even remember if he was booked or not. I can't, the game was just yesterday, and, and I'm questioning whether he was booked or not. I can't even remember. But yeah, man. Um, so England had a lot of chances to put them through. Isn't me? And, Engl and, and Netherlands. They tr they try, but they, they do. The Netherlands will have the attacking pros. England do, so the fact was when England was scored a penalty, the favor was in with England. The force was with England. The momentum was with England. England didn't lose momentum after them go equalize. They didn't lose momentum. They had multiple chances to take the lead. Phil Foden's chance afterwards, and uh, Saka's offside goal. That was actually. You know, say if VR wasn't a thing that would have been given a goal, that would have been it. Do this. <laughs> All of these technicalities about VR, man. If there was no VR in sight, that would have been given a goal. Isn't it? Because it wasn't even like he was like way offside. Like he, 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 Saka was behind the defense line. Like Saka is here on the defense line. So it was like this tight. And then go give it offside. And then after the changes were made by Gareth Southgate, which was a very good change by Gareth Southgate, who would have thought that a dude like Gareth Southgate would have made? And let me let me let me, let me rewind back a bit. Luke Shaw played in the semi final. He, he he was substituted for Trippier and played left back. And left and uh, Luke Shaw hasn't played football since February of this year. I know this version in, 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 the, in the Euros getting game time. And this version for the rest of the season since after February didn't get no game time Manchester United. But he claimed that he was in, injured and unfit. 
So anyway, yeah, they they they, they got a goal. England they knocked out Netherlands um quite convincingly. I have to say, because again, bro, England not to not 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 to not to um not to ice cream England or give them the ego, the big head, but England have a lot of good players, bro. That cannot be refuted. That cannot be denied. That cannot be ignored. They have players, man out of the wazoo. They have quality players from, from midfield to to attack. John Stones is a very good defender. Um, it's me, and that black cute seems good, decent. Pickford is an average keeper, but what are the proper, proper England keeper you go get than the average keeper of Pickford? You know? But um, let's go to the game against... Oh, why didn't he watch the game? I did not watch the Uruguay versus Colombia game. That is a shame on me. See, I was thinking to watch the game, but I was so lazy. I didn't even want to watch the game, man. But something tell me my head that um, Spain, Spain, tell me that Uruguay was going to be Colombia. I don't even know where I got that from, cause <laughs> Colombia has been colossal as 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 well as Uruguay. Uruguay scored at the goals, but Colombia. By the looks of it, beat Uruguay in the semifinals of the Copa America. I know Copa and, and Colombia is going to face Argentina. Now, in the final, I'm expecting. I believe Argent as much as I don't want to see it. I believe Argentina will win the the Copa America final. Colombia can Colombia will come close, but. Argentina, bro. The art, the uh, the Argentina, the Argent, Ar Argentina is going to beat Colombia. I'm not saying quite convincingly that could be the case, but on the day Colombia is going to lose to Argentina. Yes, me. Um, yeah, man. So yeah, but you see, there was a question asked when going back. Man, I'm all over the place. I need to be more organized. Um, the the Argentinian coach was asked about the quality of the two tournaments, see, and he was um asked which was more difficult or which one is more favorable, and to compare the levels of the turn of the tournament, and he was basically saying this is what he said. So I'm not going to I'm not going to you know say I'm going to say it in his verbiage, not my verbiage. I don't think it's more difficult from one competition to another. This guy is smart. There are some important teams that have advanced to the semifinals of the Euros. Teams that we face in the World Cup and it went well for us. That is true. But that does mean we could go to the European uh, European Championship and win it. Or maybe yes. Argentina could win it, he continued. I think the level is very even. I would like a European team one day to be invited to a Copa America to see what it is like to play in it and the opposite as well. Well, I'll say this. I'll say this. And of course, I'm no football uh, 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 breakdown expert, but it is no coincidence that the, the Euros has way better quality than Copa America. The football pitches are more quality. Like there was this football pitch, uh, 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 Canada go play on against Venezuela. You would think it was some local football match or something. You wouldn't even know if it was a Copa America game. That's so the 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 pitch looks staunchy, man. It looks it looks like mashed potatoes, man. The grass wasn't. It didn't look like a turf football field. That it it looked messed up, man. Like it like I say, like a, it just, it just looked messed up. And also, this is what I said in my last video, that if you're going to add, you're, if you're going to evaluate the quality of sides in the Euros, I know they play their football, versus in contrast to the sides in Copa America, I said this before, and I'm going to say it again right now. The sides in Euros are more rigid, they are more structured, and they are given more instructions than the Copa America. Like I said, if you watch the games in both tournaments, you notice that sides in Copa America give way more space than the Euros. And, that, and that's not even an opinion. That's a fact. Watch the games and you'll see for yourself, man. Argentina give plenty space. S small sides like what? 
Ecuador, uh, uh, Canada, I mean, Canada, not, in, not in terms of the size of the coin, but I talk about the quality of the size in the, in the tournament. They're giving, they're playing high lines. And if you look at the midfield, they midfield all over the place. So there's no proper structure in these games in the Copa America in comparison to the Euros. Because in the Euros, they have to be structured. You have to be because you're playing at a high premium level, platinum level, not premium, school premium, at a high platinum level in the Euros. You're playing in the highest, the, the, base, of, the base of stadiums, the base, the base of turf fields. You're going to be against some of the best sides with the best players. And they're managed by some of the best coaches. So the reality is that in terms of the football itself, it's not going to be as open or expansive as the Copa America. The Copa America is a bit more carefree, devil may care. It's, 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 it's not saying that it doesn't have instructions. It does. But if you see all the tour if you compare both tournaments, you even man, hey, <laughs> even Steve Wonder can see that the sides in Copa America play less rigid and less structured than the sides compared in the Euros. Doesn't take for it to figure that out, man. And again, if you watch a football that's played, you would be no you would notice that. But see, going back to Scalo Scaloni's uh, comment, Lionel Scaloni, he's basically saying that. It does it, 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 it's not, uh, man, I, man, I'm having these senior moments. Man, why am I forgetting stuff? He doesn't think it's more difficult from one competition to another. It, there is a difference, but he doesn't want to say it. He's trying to, he's trying to be tactful in answering this question, and he was. But if you were to ask me, man, the more difficult tournament is uh, the Euros. You see me? The most difficult tournament out of the two is the Euros. Your side would have sweeping man would have sweep the, the Copa America tournament with behind like 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 with its with its eyes closed. It's not even a question. But Argentina can beat a good amount of sides in the Euro, in Europe. Now if Argentina was to play against Germany, that's a tough one. If Argentina was to play against England, that would be a tough one. If Argentina was to play against Spain, ooh, that would be fire, hey, man, hey, man, that would have, hey, <laughs> that would have been so much. So I guess you could say, in one sense, the manager is right because, in terms of opponents, certain opponents, it's more difficult. With others, it's less difficult. It's me with France, although we have seen that in the World Cup final, that Argentina go beat uh, France and them go beat Netherlands. But you can't tell on the day though. This is me. And it's just based on the football. It's not based on how much quality the players are in the squad. Because like, like I was talking about with England, they have a lot of quality players, but there is no suited system that is palatable, that is com compatible with the players at town of England. So with, with Argentina and Colombia... The prob the the only probably the only side in the Copa America that could probably have a one to one with the top sides in Europe is is Argentina. Brazil, man, Brazil is no side, man. And and Ronaldinho said this. Is me. F uh, former Brazilian stars have said that this Brazilian squad is not even playing like Brazil, man. The the talent the talent has fallen off. The football has fallen off. Argentina is the only side in the Copa America that can go toe to toe with the best top sides in Europe. Is me, but we're going to see that at some point because I'm sure the winner of the Copa of 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 uh, yes the Copa America and the winner of the Euros are going to come face to face at some point, just like how Argentina played against Italy and Italy got lose, got lose to Argentina and lose three 0 So yes. Copa America sides can go against European sides, but if you want to want if you want to judge which one is more difficult, of course it's the Euros. And here's another theory. And as I wrap up this video, this is what I must say. 
Here's another theory to it. Here's a here's a here's another caveat. Playing one game against a European side doesn't mean say you you're go, you would have gone to the final of the European tournament if you were a Copa America. So so example. Argentina beat Italy in um you know between the two tournaments and Argentina was crown the best out of the two. But if you go put Argentina in a group stage in the, in the Euros and they got exposed to every European side in the group stage that they're placed in, would have they been, you know, successful? Would have they come would they would, would they have come out of that group stage? Is it would I, would they have played their proper football as usual? You know, getting you get, get you know playing against the, their usual climate, you know, playing against tough rigid structured european sides in the tournament these are questions that need that, that that should be asked if you want to if you want to take the debate on the the debate on not the not take the button on but take the debate on which tournament is better maybe argentina could have put up a fight and go through but it wouldn't probably wouldn't it wouldn't have been convincingly though you understand so yeah, man, these are things to, 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 to take into consideration. Um, so, yeah, Go, uh, let me wrap up. So, England, in my opinion, will beat Spain. No, like, I have to admit, and I've, and I've just admitted before, that I haven't had the best of luck when it comes on to estimating who's going to win because I, I estimated say, France was going to beat Spain, Spain will be in France. I estimated that Netherlands was going to beat England, England will beat Netherlands. I said that Canada was going to beat Argentina, I left that out, and Argentina wiped the floor against Canada. Is me. And I said that, what else I said? I said that um, Uruguay was going to beat Colombia, and Colombia go beat Uruguay. So, I haven't had the best of flux when it comes on estimation, bro. Is me. I mean, hell, if you were like in a death life life on the situation, I would be the last person you want to ask quiz. Like, 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 nah, I'm, 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 I'm just telling you. But is me. In the final, I'm expecting England to beat Spain. Yes. And win a trophy. Yes, the trophy is going home, England. Yes, yes, yes. Courtesy of yours, truly. And in the Copa America final, I'm expecting as much as I don't want to say, but Argentina will beat Colombia. I would like Colombia to win, though, but to be uh, logical and rational and objective, I'm expecting Argentina to beat Colombia in the final. Leave your comments below in the comment section, like and subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell as well so that you can be notified on each upload. Yeah, man, so that's the basic tournament. It's like, <laughs> it's like the tournament just started a couple of weeks, man. No, it's like a month, man. And actually, today was the final against, uh, of, uh, today was the final of England versus Italy. Three years to the day. England played Italy today, three years ago, in the, in the Euro final, and they lost it. Yes, me. Now we're going to, <laughs> now England is going to play again in the final against Spain. So yeah, let me say this, Gareth South, Southgate do deserve some credit. Some credit. I'm not giving him all the credit. I'm giving him some credit. He does deserve some credit. But I mean, a broken clock is right twice a day, right? So this, I guess this one of his twi right twice a day moments. Because he got to the, 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 the right substitution. Putting an Ivan Tony on. And Ivan Tony assisted the Hurricane in getting the goal. That saw them win that game and they go play against um, Netherlands, and and he made proper substitutions. I'm not sure about the Luke Shaw substitution, but he go put on Watkins and Cole Palmer, and Watkins and Cole Palmer were the two players that linked up, and they got the, the second goal for England and knock out Netherlands. So yes, those were his two right twice a day moments. Is me, uh, Gareth Southgate. Anyway. Leave your comments below in the comment section. Our brother is out. Peace. And yes, I'll be doing a vi uh, 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 uh. I'll be doing a match reaction video on Sunday, of course, after the final. But I, I, I want to do it everything at once. So after the game, 
after the Copa America final, which is quite baffling to me. Why you go put the Copa America final as if that is something to look forward to? Come on, man. Put that first, play that first, and play the, the Euro final afterwards. Now, I know it's time, time zone different, man. Or at least play the third place winner early on the day on Saturday and have the Copa America final the Saturday night. What's up with that, man? You're putting Copa America <laughs> final after the Euros? Like, the Euros is nothing to look forward to. Mixed priorities. But anyway, like and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments down below in the comment section. Our brothers out. Until then.